sometimes I'll do it the full length of the rod. Oh my god! Watch your rods over there, everyone! Pull it! Ready? Got him. Got him. Yeah! Yeah, they're right out there in front of that thing. Damn, son, you ain't that big. Good Lord. Get over here. Get over here. Yeah, it's a freaking hot mess. Yep. I was gonna take a break anyway. Idiot. Yep. Dude, what the f Take it easy. Come here, stupid. Look at that. <laughs> It'll be fine. That one looks bigger. That's what she said. Yep. Yep. Damn, look at the bend on that katana. Wow, son. Eddie! <laughs> All right, ladies and gents, gonna take a quick break from the video to show you what's going on out there. Uh, first, we'll start off with the rods. Uh, we're doing uh, some drop shotting and uh, throwing some mini jigs out there. So on drop shot, I'm using a uh, Katana K5. Uh, this is the rod I typically use for uh, for drop shot. It's a uh, seven foot six rod, and it's what I call a moderate fast action rod, meaning it's it's got a stiff uh, backbone to it, but the tip is soft, so uh, it gives it a little bit of action. I have it paired with a, a Daiwa Presso 1000. And on it, I have spooled some Sinister Strand Premium Fiber Braid in four pound. And then I work that up to a uh, liter of uh, Runkle Power Fluoro in five pound. And I attach that with a double uni knot. Now my liter is usually about uh, uh, five feet long to sometimes I'll do it the full length of the rod. But typically down here in Southern California for these uh, stock trout, I usually go with about a five foot liter. Now I wanna show you another rod that is comparable and can get the job done but at a much uh, better price point. This is a uh, Daiwa Spinmatic, an eight foot. Uh, and this is more of a fast action rod. This is the rod I use for bait and weight, uh, but it can be used for drop shot and it's a much more reasonable pri reasonably priced rod than the, uh, the Katana set up there. Uh, uh, and it definitely can get the job done and it can do uh, dual duty. Like I wouldn't use bait and weight with the Katana but with this, uh, I can I can throw out some bait there on a Carolina rig, or if I, I decide, I can uh, tie on a drop shot rig and uh, uh, work the drop shot, no problem. I have it paired with a, a Shimano Legalis 1000. And on here, I don't have any braid because, again, like there, there's a little bit of confusion with the braid. 
Um, the, the braid, uh, I typically use it uh, for just my moving baits, my drop shot, mini jigs, spoons, because the sensitivity comes into play and the castability comes into play uh, because I'm trying to get these, these baits, these lures out as far as possible. Plus, when I'm working it back, I'm holding the rod so I can feel really what's going on at the other end. Uh, so the braid on a bait and weight rod you get the castability, sure, but here in SoCal, typically the trout are going to be up close, so you don't really need to cast that far. And secondly, um, I'm not going to be holding this rod typically. I'm going to have it in a, in a rod holder, and the sensitivity is going to be kind of lost because I'm not going to feel anything that's going on in the end, and I'm going to be watching the rod tip. And that kind of takes the braid out of it. But if you want to fish braid for bait and weight, or if you do successfully, uh, let me know. Let me know how you do it. I just don't do it. So let's uh, go to the bench now and I'll show you uh, some of the rigs we're using and uh, some of the setups and, and how I rig them up. All right guys, uh, I'll show you some of the uh, rigs we were using out there and the baits. Um, what I was using and having the most success with was a drop shot rig, but I was using a single drop shot this time, so just one hook instead of the double drop shot. And also I went down in size and weight and I went to a 1 32nd ounce drop shot weight. Uh, my thinking was, there's so many lines in the water, I, I was trying to minimize the amount of uh, lines I might uh, tangle into, so I went with a much lighter weight so it would give me a shorter cast and just one hook, uh, hopefully that I could snake my way through uh, all those lines that are out there. Uh, but for the hook, I always use a number 8 mosquito hook. You can use a number 10 as well, like Esmond and Art usually use 10s. Uh, so neither one is wrong, but uh, I, I typically use a number 8. And I have this tied up with a five pound Runkle uh, Power Fluoro. Now for, uh, for baits, what was working good on the drop shot were the, the Devil Tails and the Powerball Worms. And uh, what you saw caught on was uh, this uh, Green Pumpkin Powerball Worm that Golden State makes. Uh, but later, uh, I also hooked up some on uh, this Lemon Lime uh, Devil Tail and this Green Pumpkin Devil Tail, which is the same colors as the Powerball Worm. It's just a, a, a newer version of it and it has a little bit more action. Uh, it obviously, it's got the fork tail there and the, the bigger head on it. So I'll show you how I hook these on, especially these uh, devil tails, because they're a little bit different, or at least the way I like to hook them on. And what I like to do, since it's got such a big head, is I like to just hook it on the uppermost portion of the head. So I start at the top, but in the uppermost portion, and then I just stick the hook through right before it's about to hit the bend. I pop the uh, the point out and push it all the way down the shaft of the hook. So this way, I have maximum hook sticking out. So when the fish bites it, this rubber doesn't uh, uh, occlude the barb and the point of the hook, and they get a lot of hook, so I get more hookups that way. With the uh, Powerball worms, very similar, but it's obviously got a smaller head. So I go right down the middle of it and into the worm. So I, I have the, the worm going around the bend of the hook before I pop that, that point through. And I push it all the way up to the eye of the hook. So you got a good amount of hook sticking up. Okay. Now what Art was catching those fish on was the uh, El Diablo mini jig, which right here, 1.5 uh, uh, inch mini jig and it's red and black with the red flakes. El Diablo is one of those uh, mini jigs, or the minnows for that matter, in that color that, that seems to work everywhere, every lake, every condition. It works great in the Sierras and clear water. It works down here in the, in the muddy water. It's just uh, uh, one of those colors that uh, you don't go anywhere without. And what he was uh, using was a, a 32nd ounce uh, weight or jig head uh, instead of a 16th, which this is the lighter one. And I'll show you how you rig these on here. I typically go through the skirt and put the uh, eye of the hook through first and carefully slide the rubber over the eye because that eye can rip the rubber of this, this jig. And I slowly work it on so I don't rip it until the lead head is at the very top of the jig. And I use my thumb and push that eye through and it looks just like that. Now another way to rig these is a way a lot of guys do it is you go through the top with the hook and you make a small hole with your hook not at the very top but just off to the side 
push that through and then you just snake the jig over the hook without sticking it through again until it comes out the bottom of the skirt. So then you got the hook coming out the bottom of the skirt and your lead head right there and then you grab onto the hook and carefully pull the jig rubber over the lead head till the cap goes over and there it is. Now this way is cool because if you don't use the uh, the clips like I use and you just tie on, you can change your uh, jig color uh, on the fly. You can just peel them on and peel them off because they come off very easily if you just go right back through the same hole very carefully and slowly work it out. And there, and the jig looks completely fine. There's a little tiny hole that you can't see on camera but you know if you want to reuse this jig, you just find that hole and put it back through and you're good to go. All right, guys, I want to take a minute to uh, cover the fishing conditions that were out there. As you can see, it was very crowded. Um, and uh, for those of you that live out of state or don't know how it is here in Southern California, our trout fishing opportunities are very limited during the season. Uh, we're down to just park lakes and places you have to pay money to uh, uh, go catch trout. We can't get up to the Sierras this time. The season's closed. Uh, the, the mountains uh, usually have a lot of snow uh, and some folks just can't afford uh, the gas money and, and in this economy hotels and all that kind of thing to, to get up and get out to some of these places so we're stuck with what we're stuck with so sometimes you're going to get to the lake pay your, your admission get in and realize it's absolutely packed and you got to squeeze in somewhere where you're shoulder to shoulder everybody so uh, what you need to do and a few tips to, to have a good day even in, in some terrible conditions <laughs> is uh, get to know your neighbors first of all um, uh, they're all there for the same thing you are you know uh, uh, you're gonna end up tangling with people you, you can't help it you're gonna hook into fish the fish have a mind of their own sometimes you can't control what they're doing you get an extra strong one that's got a lot of will and uh, he's gonna run sideways and uh, uh, tangle up with somebody or their fish is going to tangle with you and uh, you guys are going to have to retie. So uh, uh, be mindful of that, accept it, it's going to happen, uh, it's not a big deal and especially if you kind of get to know everybody, uh, you guys can kind of just laugh it off and uh, uh, really it's, it's kind of like you guys versus the fish, you know, you're all there to catch the fish, so uh, uh, have some camaraderie, make a team and, uh, and get the job done as best you can. Another thing is uh, mind your casting zones. Look around where everybody is and where they are casting. Uh, especially if you're uh, using a drop shot like I was, uh, that thing basically drags the bottom. So if somebody has a bait rig out and you cast over it, you're gonna, you're gonna tangle up with it. So pay attention to where you're casting, pay attention to where other folks are casting. Uh, also, there's going to be uh, anglers there of all different skill levels. Usually when it's packed like this on a Saturday or Sunday, there's going to be a lot of uh, new fishermen, so they may not uh, be accurate with the casting. So, so pay attention and help them out uh, uh, and be on the lookout because the, the more time you're tangled, the less time you're in there fishing. So uh, uh, it's always good to make sure uh, you help folks out and pay attention to where everybody is. And bottom line, uh, we're all there for the same thing. We're all there to catch fish and have a good time and relax. So. Uh, try not to get uptight, uh, uh, try to make friends with everybody and, and just realize uh, that everybody is there trying to do the same thing, just trying to have a good time. And uh, hopefully if, if uh, that all works out and you get some good neighbors, uh, you, can, you can still have a good day and kind of make lemons into lemonade. With that, let's uh, get back to the video and see what uh, shakes out the rest of the day. Yeah, he's just solid, man. You sure it's not a uh, jet ski? Yeah. Or a submarine, maybe. Submarine? Yeah. yeah. I, I got a yellow submarine last week. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yellow submarine. Dude, no, this is. This is 
Pick it up though, pick it up, Art. This thing's a tank. That's a 20 footer. 25. Three tons on them. Look at that, dude. It looks like a snag. Yeah. It literally looks like a snag. That is yeah. insane. But it lives. <laughs> it lives. Two hours later. Yeah, just watch that. Watch your rods over there, everyone. Pull in. Pull your lines in. I'm right, he's right here now. He's right here. He's coming back. An eternity later. He's coming now. He's getting tired too. He's like, as soon as he comes up, he's He's coming, here he comes, here he yep. comes, here he comes. He's, he's pushing 10 for sure. Yeah. Just, wait, just make sure he's up the arm. Yep. He's giving it his last bit. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See we can keep him up. Almost there. Ah. Ready? Ready? Got him. Got him. Celebration, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Thing looks like a carpet so big. <laughs> Eddie! <laughs> oh, well. Nine nine. Good enough. Nine nine. Nine nine. Yeah, right there. Nine nine. Nine nine. Almost ten. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, good times out at uh, out at the lake there, uh, especially with the uh, the GSF guys. It's always fun. Uh, it's not my ideal conditions, obviously. <laughs> I don't think it's anybody's ideal conditions. Uh, but we make the best of it, and uh, we still had a good time, still got into some fish. Uh, and, and really, uh, uh, both things were working. We had a drop shot going and uh, mini jigs were getting the job done. So um, uh, always uh, plan on fishing a variety of things. Uh, there was also a lot of folks catching on uh, uh, bait and weight, Carolina rigs, mice tails, power bait, what, whatever. It all seemed to be working. The fish seemed to be biting well. And uh, uh, the, the topper was uh, Esty getting on that, that huge trout at the end. And, and, and thank goodness it was later in the day and a lot of people had left because if it was early on, uh, uh, that would have been a completely different in outcome with all those lines in the water. Uh, uh, we probably wouldn't have got that fish in. So, so really a uh, good deal and really worked out. So with that, if you want any of the uh, Golden State Fishing custom baits, the Katana rods or the Waterland sunglasses I use on this channel, there's a QR code right up here. Uh, if you uh, type in code CSPANKER with Golden State Fishing at checkout, you get 10% off. Uh, with the Waterland sunglasses, if you use this QR code, it'll take you uh, to a link. If you click on that link, if you buy anything using that link, you get 15% off of your purchase. So go check out those fine products. And uh, oh, uh, the Katana rods. Uh, I said in the last video, uh, we're looking at the first week of April, uh, the shipment's going to get here. So those things will be widely available and as soon as that happens, I will let, let you all know and uh, you'll be able to get them uh, either on uh, at Katana Rods 2022 on Instagram or at Golden State Fishing Custom Baits on Instagram. I, I believe it's GSF Custom Baits, I'll put it down here. Um, uh, and, and just send them a, a DM and uh, they will get you all set up. So until next time, uh, always make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the videos. If you have any questions, obviously leave them here on uh, YouTube, or you can contact me at my Instagram at cspankeroutdoors. And I uh, hope to see you out there and tight lines.